Good morning, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. Hope you're all doing very well today. We are playing more Golgari. This is our second match for the channel with the New Look 75 post-November update. And I'll just tell you off the bat, we are against Hardened Scales, and this is a matchup we've seen twice before now um, on the channel. But hey, it's a popular one in the meta. MTG Goldfish has it as 2.33% of the meta, um, I believe joint 10th, or just outside of the top 10, joint 11th, one of the two. And uh, MTG Top 8 has both Hardened Scales and Regular Affinity as a 6% combined meta share, with Hardened Scales making up the strong majority of, of all those cards. So it's somewhere between like 2 and 4% of the meta, right around the, the bottom of the top 10 most seen decks in Modern. And in my opinion, it is here to stay. It's it's a very good one. It's uh, It's got a lot more resilience than regular affinity. And I don't think regular affinity is bad or anything. You know, I don't think it's just been replaced. Um, it's still definitely a deck that will kind of fade in and out of the meta, as it always has, based on the prevalence of artifact hate, um, just perhaps with a smaller overall share than it used to have. But... Hardened Scales will probably ebb and flow a little bit less and just be around in general more. And so it's a deck that you really need to know how to play against. It's a tricky one to navigate. And, you know, this being the third match of the channel, all three play out pretty differently. So it's worth showcasing this matchup repeatedly. Um, now we are on the play. And let's forget for a second that, that we know we're against Hardened Scales. In a blind matchup, this hand is great. We've got three lands to four spells, which is pretty ideal. We've got both colors in abundance. We've got utility from the land base. Turn one, Thoughtseize is completely amazing. Um, and then turn two, Tarmogoyf. Turn three, we have a Liliana. Not not necessarily the Liliana, but she is, um, you know, just as good sometimes, better at other times, and not as good as others. I think Veil vale overall is still slightly what we want in a blind match, but... Last Hope is so good, that's why we've got two in the main deck now. She's so good. Now, the only real downside of this hand in a blind matchup is it's a little painful. We're taking four from Thought Seizes, and right now we're going to have to shock this in at some point to play our things on curve. Um, so that is not ideal. We, we hope in keeping a hand that we're against a deck that will not aggressively pressure our life total, um, but this hand is definitely a strong, strong keep. Our opponent likes their 7 as well. And we're going to Blooming Marsh Thought Seize and find out about the Hardened Scales deck. So. Oh, I clicked through it. Boo. Okay, well, this is just as good. So, <clears throat> we see they have 3 lands and a Mox Opal, right? So already they are a little bit mana source heavy. Now, that's not that bad for them, because A, it's better than being mana screwed, and B, they have two copies of Ink Moth Nexus, so a couple man lands, especially the Infect one, is very, very good for them. They also have a pair of animation modules, which is a really good card against us. Nice grindy value card, helps them use that those stray pieces of mana that are that are just floating around and helps them go wide, you know, and, and indeed is a mana sink um, when they have a lot of mana to use as well. Um, but the clear payoff card in their hand right now is the namesake card of the deck, Hardened Scales. Um, not only is it the least redundant piece in the deck, you know, taking Opal doesn't feel good because they have a lot of mana, taking Module doesn't feel good because they have a backup copy. Um, so Hardened Scales is the least redundant and also just the most powerful. It's just, it's just the best card in the deck. Um, it's really what pushes the deck over the top. So it's also the hardest, um, to answer, you know. We can answer the servo tokens, for example, with Liliana of the Last Hope. Uh, we need to draw some specific cards to answer hardened scales now. We play a higher density of those cards than just about any other deck in the format, so we're well equipped to do so, but we still, you know, no guarantee we'll see them, right? So they just get to go really explosive here. Mox Opal and Darksteel Citadel into double module. They have one unknown card left in hand. We draw Tassiger. Um, yeah, you know, we, we wouldn't mind just more, um, we wouldn't mind some spot removal, you know, Maelstrom Pulse is looking pretty good right now for sure, but Tassiger is a fine one. 
So here we have two choices, right? We can either play the Tarmogoyf or we can Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is going to be pretty much dead in hand except exactly right now because they are flush with mana. Probably whatever they draw next turn, they'll be able to play out. Or whatever they drew this turn, they'll be able to play out next turn. It's likely that they can play, you know, a two drop and a one drop next turn. That's a realistic thing for them to have. So while we do risk blanking here because we know at least two of their three cards are lands and cannot be taken, I chose to fire off the Thoughtseize here. And we are rewarded significantly for taking that because Arcbound Ravager is a very problematic card for us to deal with, especially with some man lands floating around. I'm very, very happy I made that choice. And then, of course, we also get to resolve our Overgrown Tomb tapped, and we get to be mindful of our life total, which, as I identified in the opening hand is uh, is unusually under pressure from our own actions here. So they find a walking ballista off the top. That's a pretty good one for them. That's definitely a good one for them. They get to make a servo as well because they have that uh, extra mana source to use. Now, we draw a fatal push. All right, so here we have two choices, right? Um... I think we're supposed to just not be too cute and we're supposed to just kind of fatal push things as soon as we can in a matchup like this. So we can fatal push a Ballista, we can play a Tarmogoyf, and we can say go. Or we can just play a Liliana the Last Hope and kill the Walking Ballista. Now, that means they get to shoot her for one, which is a little bit worse than them shooting us for one. Because, of course, we want to keep her around as much as possible. That said, I still think it might be the correct play here because we... It really just want to, you know, it's nice to be able to answer something, a high payoff card cleanly by ticking Lily up. Again, even if they get to ping her back in response. We might need the fatal push next turn, for example, if they play land into a 2-2 of some kind, then she doesn't kill it anymore and we need the fatal push to kill it. So even though, you know, um, there's an argument for push into Goyf, I think that was the correct line. I think that was the correct line. Now, the, the only downside of what we've done so far, again, I really like the fact that we took this out with Thoughtseize. I really like the fact that we could play her. We've now put off the Tarmogoyf for a couple turns, right? So that's the downside. We, we would have a 4-5 Goyf on field right now if we'd taken a different line on either of those turns, which might prove relevant. We'll just have to see how the game plays out. This is what I mean about this matchup being really interesting. A lot of decisions on both sides of the table. So they fire up a, a Nexus, they take Lily down to one. And they have a follow-up play of Throne of Geth. All right, so definitely a good one could become a problem later on, but for now I'm happy that they're empty-handed and they don't have any, any creatures on field besides the Servo token. So, <clears throat> all right, pretty... Pretty bad draw of a thought sees there. It's likely to be dead for the rest of the game, and even if it's not, it's painful. Um, definitely not happy about that, but we get to cleanly kill the servo and we get to pass. Now what we're going to do here is we're, we're bluffing all kinds of stuff, right? We're bluffing push, decay, trophy. We actually have the push, though. So we are planning, we are hoping that they're going to fire up both Ink Moth Nexi, send them both at Liliana for lethal, and make us have something. And then we get to Field of Ruin one of them, go get a Swamp, Fatal Push the other. It's going to be pretty good. Fire up one. Fire up the other. Sure. <clears throat> the other benefit of this line is if whatever their last card is is stranded in hand, then maybe our Thought Seize does become useful. We're just going to kind of have to see what how the turn plays out, but off the bat, we get to field one of them. And we get to push the other. Oh, they draw hardened scales, and now that's pretty bad because, uh, of course, they get to they get to play it because we gave them a basic off a of field of rune. Now, I still don't think our line was incorrect. We can't just say, all right, just in case you have a really sweet one drop to play, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to let Lily the Last Hope die and let you keep two Ink Moth Nexuses. Like, 
that's that's still way way worse but the fact that it was something that they could squeeze out there and the fact that it was a hardened scales nonetheless yeah that's that's not ideal for us but we're still in a fine position for now um we get to tick lily up and we get to finally throw down some threats right so I think the best play here is to just ditch everything. It would have been nice to leave the fatal push in there, right? Because that's a really nice uh, target to bring back with Tassiger. But I think we just need to play both cards here and just say, all right, all of a sudden we have a couple four or fives protecting our Planeswalker. What are you going to do about it? They're going to draw a land. Now, that's great for us. We wanted them to brick for that turn exactly. Definitely, definitely helpful. Now, that said, Inventor's Fair is a good one. It's going to gain them some life, um, and it's going to be a tutor eventually. Um, definitely not that bad as far as lands go, but still, a land is not ideal for them. So we are in such a commanding position. We've got them on a two-turn clock. We're cracking in for eight. This turn, we tick up our Lily. And, you know, you could argue that we should just kind of hold up the Tassiger activation, but I think we're supposed to scooze here. We're supposed to just go wide. This thing, you know, if they produce a couple blockers, this thing can eat two creatures and also become a four-power creature, which, you know, is just a lot harder for them to not be on a two-turn clock against this now. Okay, they find an Arcbound Ravager. That is just about the perfect draw for them. And they wisely only spend two mana playing it. They're going to invest the other two mana into two triggered abilities off of each animation module. And now all of a sudden they're in the game. They're in the game again. Because now they have, now they go wide, they have chump blockers, but they're not just chump blockers because at any point Arcbound Ravager can gobble up a bunch of artifacts and become bigger than any of our things. They have Throne of Geth to proliferate. And they also have Hardened Scales, so if any of these Ravager activations takes place, they are getting even more value off of them. So this is actually quite bad for us. Now on the end step, we will eat one thing. We ideally actually do want to leave this other thing in here. It's giving the Goyf plus two plus two right now, artifact and creature. So we won't eat that unless we have to. Yikes, Blooming Marsh is a bad draw. Like I said, all of a sudden, they're, they've got a really scary board. So first, we're going to just kind of maybe force some action here. We are still bluffing some cards, so let's take the Lily up and see what happens. They will sack it to proliferate. Sure, that makes sense, as expected, and yeah. I mean, they just get to add two counters to the Ravager. It's pretty good. Pretty good, and we can't, we can't attack into this thing. I think we're just supposed to pass. We we're trying to take our Lily up toward ultimate. That's, uh, you know, and she is making the board more narrow over time. That's definitely for sure. So here we just we just bluff a piece of interaction, and in reality we're holding up Tassiger and, and I guess Scavenging Ooze. But they gain a life off Inventor's Fair, and they rip a hanger backwalker off the top. Oh boy. Oh boy. Very, very bad for us. We were in such a commanding position, and now look at them. They just, again, they get to make two servos as a companion to this thing. This thing, when it dies, is going to make a bunch of thopters. Yeah. Now, they're not interested in attacking yet either. Okay. Still kind of having to play defensively, at least for another turn. So we're going to roll the dice on a Tassiger activation. And we get to buy back a Fatal Push. Sweet. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, we draw a scavenging use. Now we're just going to go ahead and push the hanger back walker here. Um, if I had another piece of spot removal, I would push the Ravager just to get it off the table. But, and maybe I still should have. See, this matchup is so hard to pilot, like, with perfect accuracy. Um... But here I'm just I just want to stop them from going super super wide, and uh, you know getting the walker off the table as soon as possible is is gonna be the best way to do that because if they get to untap they get to you know add two counters to this and then when it eventually dies there's just a million thopters it's gonna be tough to eventually win through those even maelstrom pulse is not a great out because we have other high priority things to answer 
we really want to answer hardened scales, and of course they have servos as well as Thopter, so I wouldn't even get to cleanly sweep up the token. So maybe I still have to get the Ravager out, but I kind of want, now that I have Fatal Push plus Tassiger, I kind of want to extend the game. I think they're due to not rip a bomb off the top. We still have Lily ticking toward alt, right? So I want to get the walker off the field and maybe just try to keep a holding pattern up and buy back the push with Tassiger. So they're going to sack it to proliferate. Or no, sorry, they're sacking a servo to proliferate, making that thing a 4-4. Yeah, Throne of Geth is just amazing with alongside module and scales and some XX creatures. Yep, pretty good. Pretty good. So I just get to, you know, cleanly kill a Thopter, at least. That's another reason to to do kill Walker on my own terms, is you just get to cleanly kill a Thopter with Liliana. You know, that's not nothing. But here, again, we just have to pass. We have, you know, playing the second Scoos doesn't really do much. So we're just bluffing interaction again, you know, kind of hoping that they just keep holding us off and we can keep drawing kill spells. Um, now we're interested in, in pushing the the Arcbound Ravager for sure. So they find another piece of gas. It's not as good as their last two draws, but it's still pretty nice. Still another modular creature. Uh, still gets them a couple servos. They get to just proliferate here, right? And look at this wide, wide board. All right, they've got an 8-8 Arcbound Ravager. And they're going to start to send some things in. Okay. So what's happening is they have two creatures going at Liliana and two creatures going at me. All the stuff is in the air. I can't block it, right? I cannot block this stuff. So do I block the Ravager? So what happens if I do block it? If I do block it, they will simply sacrifice it. Um, they, they will do one of two things. If they want to shove all in on something they will they will sacrifice the Ravager after the block has been assigned and go all in on the flyer that's coming at me. Or potentially put the counters onto a Thopter just to get Lily off the field, but eh, I don't know if they would do that. Um, if we don't block, then I think that should make them more suspicious about multiple removal spells. Like, it puts the onus on them, and maybe they just say, okay... I'm happy to crack in for 9 and for 2 on the Lily. I'm not going to die in the crackback. I've got a million weenies. So I could block. I could not block. I chose not to block. Tell me if I played this wrong, guys. Like, it's it's obviously not an easy decision here. But I chose not to block. And I think I think that indicates a higher likelihood of, of having some instant speed removal. Trophy, Decay, Push, they know all these things are in our deck, right? So, I say no blocks, onus is on you. You gonna do anything about it? So, they're gonna sack their modular dude, get a couple counters on the Rav, okay? Or, excuse me, a couple counters on the Thopter, and by a couple I mean a lot. That thing's all of a sudden a 6-6. Six, six. They're now consuming things with the Arcbound Ravager. So they are just go shoving all in here. They're going really, really, really deep. Okay. Yep, they're just going all in. And of course, we don't have anything to do about it. So I'm going to make them, you know, have the... I'm going to make them go even more all in, make them sweat it out, right? We're going to eat a couple things with ooze. They have to eat yet another thing with with Ravager, which to be fair is what I would do if I had a, you know, a fatal push here anyway. Because look, they have eaten, uh, they've eaten their other two attacking Thopter, so they are, this is the only thing attacking me. Like, we're going to lose the Lily either way unless I have two fatal pushes. But man, you know, I think this was a really high-risk line from our opponent, but, you know, they just keep going all in and we just simply don't have an answer. We were just a little bit too slow. The fact that that was a Blooming Marsh was a little rough. If this was an untapped land, we could have maybe bought back a Fatal Push there. But as it is, we just have nothing and they just get us. So looks like they were getting a little bit nervous about the game going on for too much longer because we were representing 
you know, the potential to buy back fatal pushes. We had a couple unknowns in hand. We might have better top decks than them, even though even their mediocre top decks like Arcbound Worker become pretty amazing with all the stuff in the background. But I guess they just said, hey, it's time to make them have something. And it was risky, especially the way they they ate their Thopters that were attacking instead of, you know, instead of maybe eating a couple of these pieces back here. Because if we had just one removal spell for the Ravager, they were pretty screwed, right? But we didn't have it, and they just got us. So they called our bluff, we didn't have an answer. Pretty rough stuff, but man, we were flying, we were in such control, we were feeling so good, and they had all the stuff that just needed creatures. To, to make them good. And then they drew, what, they drew Ravager first, and then um, Hangerback Walker second, and they just exploded with value. Now, maybe I should have Fatal pushed the Ravager. Maybe I should have taken a block here. It is really hard to say. I think all of my lines were at least logical and defensible. Of course, if now with, with hindsight being 2020. Maybe we, we should have taken the block. Maybe we should have pushed the Ravager. I, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments, of course. As always, I'm, I'm receptive to um, I'm receptive to feedback and, and to critiques. And yeah, this is a matchup that this is why I like to show it. It's a real tough one to navigate flawlessly. And uh, it can play out a million different ways. And, and they got us. They got us good. So um, link to the description below for the sideboard tech in a previous video against Hardened Scales, if you'd like to check that out. If you do check that out, just keep in mind we no longer have Damnation to bring in, um, so that doesn't come in. If you still want to bring out the same number of cards, um, maybe a Fulminator Mage is interesting in this matchup. I It, it was a maybe board card for me um, in the initial deck tech, I believe, and, and it's certainly playable here. But, yeah, um, or you can just cut one fewer card than, than you did before. And maybe now that we have a second Lily, the last hope, we just, you know, we just don't want to make another cut. So anyway, check that out if you want to see how we side in this matchup. But otherwise, let's move on to game two. All right, my friends, game two against Hardened Scales Affinity. They got us G1, so we're on the play and our, our hand is good. Definitely good. A couple fatal pushes is always what we want to see. Golgari Charm is really nice. Two for one potential, depending on their board, but... Um, also an out against Hardened Scales, which is really useful. Uh, another follow-up kill spell, Brutality. This can get kind of outclassed in the late game once they start deploying things with more mana sunk into them on their X-Xs and or have a Hardened Scales down. Um, so the fact that if this is going to be a kill spell, it's better in the opener um, is, is relevant here. And of course, we do have a threat that also helps us grind. Um, you know, even though we're a little choked on land for now, we're, we're probably going to draw some more. Even still, it'll be castable by, like, turn four at the latest, because they're going to present some stuff for us to hit here, right? So, um, love the hand. Definitely can't complain about it. Opponent's keeping seven as well. So here, you know, I rate our life total highly enough to just say, yeah, let's just take a chance to deploy our overgrown tomb. Razor Verge Thicket. Now, I don't think I saw white in game one, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't think we saw white. Ooh, hardened scales, turn one, pretty good. Um, white is not something that I have really seen before in hardened scales. Maybe it's becoming trendy, maybe it's becoming stock, I do not know. Uh, Abrupt Decay is a wonderful draw. Just a wonderful draw. Here we definitely need to take care of the hardened scales, but... Um, so if they have creatures down, like if they have stuff with death triggers, I say just kill it on your main phase, right? Just kill it on your main phase because you can't necessarily play around things in response. Like, they could they could just play a man land, and then you're trying to kill their thing on their turn, and they can at least fire up the man land and get the modular trigger over to the man land. So don't mess around, in my opinion, in this matchup. Don't try to be too clever or too cute if they present a creature. With a death trigger, just kill it on your own terms on your main phase while they're tapped out. Now, hardened scales, we don't necessarily have to do that with. Maybe if we leave the scales around, it will incentivize them to play like a walking ballista here for two. We can kill the scales in response and kind of blow them out a little bit. So let's see what they do. 
They're going to play an Arcbound Worker. All right, not as big of a blowout. Not not really a blowout at all, but we'll still just kill this thing in a response. Now, you could say, you know, you we could decay it, we could charm it. It's kind of either way. Decay is more... Uh, is more of a well-rounded card. It's it's an answer to certain, you know, two twos or or just non-creature artifacts we might want to hit. So I think charm there is correct. Of course, we're punished for that a little bit because if we had decayed, we could untap and, and charm and two for one. So a little unfortunate there, but I think it was the correct line. Anyway, we draw a third land. That's pretty sweet. And here I'm just interested in killing their things. Like we're just. Again, we're not messing around here. We're going to kill both of their things in our main phase. Once again, because they could untap, play a man land, and then we look a little silly because we held up our fatal push. They get to put those two counters over to the man land. That's not what we want. We're just pretty happy to just, you know, two for two them there. Kill their things, keep the board clear. Uh, we now are live to play Tassiger next turn as well. Um, drawing a fetch land there is pretty fine because it's going to let us... Um, play our Tassiger while delving intelligently here. We could leave either Charm or Push, or both for that matter, and we could we could tap a, a third land. All of that is viable, but um, we have a Decay, which at this point we're probably holding for a really high priority target like Hardened Skills, so I'm pretty happy to just delve everything away but the Push. Um, we get to hold up Fatal Push this turn, and of course, we now have enough mana to start activating Tassiger if we have the window to do so. They find an Arcbound Ravager. They're gonna main phase a Pendlehaven activation with this thing summoning sick. Okay, I am confused. They're gonna float a white mana and then sack it to make it bigger. I'm really confused. They're gobbling up a Darksteel Citadel too. Okay, you got a 4-5. Dramoka's Command. Wow. So this is what white is for. Pretty spicy if I do say so myself. So this thing can prevent damage instant or sorcery would do. Okay, so that's a nice little, you know, effective counterspell to Anger of the Gods or indeed any, any red spot removal. Okay. Target player sacrifices an enchantment. Sure, you know, getting rid of a stony silence seems pretty good. And then you can do stuff like this. You can give your stuff counters, which is, of course, what the deck does anyway, so that's pretty cool. And it's kind of a removal spell, too. It can fight something. That is very, very spicy. I see why they play white now for this card, and, you know, who knows what else. I really like this. I think it's really cool. Unfortunately for them, we held up our fatal push. We get to push this thing in response, and that just blows them out so hard, right? They just spent so much mana and so many resources going all in on this fight plan and of course we push it in response this spell will fizzle and we are just we've just got a Tassiger on board now we still both only have one card in hand I'll get a second when I untap and draw so they might not be that far behind but they've just got nothing on board like you know we're, we're just gonna crash in with Tassigers and we're probably gonna out top deck them they have a lot of work to do to reassemble a board and for all we know they just had another land in hand or something right so definitely you know a line that's of similar aggressiveness to them shoving all in on on just two attackers last game and on just one coming at us they could have lost hard to a fatal push last game just like they lost hard to a fatal push this game. Um, I continue to think that it might have been a little bit aggressive last game, but I'm not hating because they got us with it. They won. Here, you know, uh, of course I would need to know what their last card is, but I, I think this is actually a really reasonable line. Like, if this um, was pulled off, man oh man is that powerful for them. Like, I definitely don't hate this line at all, but of course we were able to answer it, and uh, yeah, definitely feels pretty good. So we had a really nice draw, you know, pushes, decays, Golgari charm, a Tassiger, the, the lands to play it all. Yeah, um, and Collective Brutality too. Our draw was sweet and we sequenced well and we, we blew them out when they went all in on this Dramoka's command for the fight plan. So um, yeah, cool little, little game. Like I said, they all end up so different. It's pretty crazy. Um, 
definitely look forward to, the, to playing this matchup for that reason. But anyway, we got him in Game 2. Let's go over to Game 3, see if we can do it on the draw. All right, everybody, Game 3 on the draw against Hardened Scales, and our hand is pretty good. We've got a couple sideboard cards making appearances here in the form of Golgari Charm and Kalidus. So we want to see, like, exactly one threat most of the time against Hardened Scales. We just want a pile of interaction and one threat because they will often struggle to remove it, although we've seen that they can in a pretty spicy way with Dromoka's Command. Last game they had that capability, but we want to see one threat and one threat exactly, and then we want a pile of lands in an even bigger pile of interaction. We've got it. We've got all that. Um, we could trade in a fourth land for a third piece of interaction and be very happy, but at least we know we can cast Kalidus on curve, and Kalidus is a great, great threat here. He's big, he gains life, he he makes zombies, you know, just like they make an army of servos with their animation modules, we'll make an army of zombies to match them when we kill stuff. And of course, he is effectively a rest in peace on a stick. As far as their death triggers on creatures are concerned, they're not going to get him if Kalidus is around. So if you untap with this card and you're still in the game, you're probably going to win the game against Hardened Scales. We do have some utility out of the land base. We'd probably rather see Field of Ruin, but this is still quality. Um, turn 1 Inquisition is going to be crucial to slowing them down, especially because we're on the draw, long enough to make Kalidus good. This card, once again, kills Hardened Scales and, and can potentially 2 for 1 their board. So, love the hand, and our opponent has kept 7 all, game, all 3 games excuse me, as well. Pendlehaven. Hardened Scales. Oh boy. Turn one Hardened Scales is a little scary when we're on the draw because we cannot kill it uh, turn one. The best we can do, or excuse me, we, we can kill it turn two, but they of course get their turn, turn two before we do. Best thing we can do is turn one Inquisition here and try to take their biggest payoff card. So they have a second land. So they're casting everything, even though they don't have anywhere near Metalcraft yet for Mox Opal, right? So they're going to just cast stuff for two next turn. Hmm, so Steel Overseer is obviously a good card, but it's actually one of the less scary ones in terms of how it, in isolation, interacts with Hardened Scales, because it doesn't get any immediate benefits from Hardened Scales. If they get to untap with the Overseer, then yeah, that's pretty scary, and that's pretty terrifying, especially with a man land around, they can start getting pretty big. Um, they draw one drop off the top to go along with all this, and they are rolling. So what does Metallic Mimic do? I do not see this card in every deck. I don't believe it's stock, um, but it seems very quality, right? It seems like a high-quality inclusion. It's an artifact, helps with all that stuff, Metalcraft. Um, you choose a creature type, you know, I guess Construct is probably what most of their types are. I, I would need to check a list to confirm that, but they're probably mostly Constructs. Um, Arcbound Ravager, at least, is a beast, I believe, which is uh, kind of interesting. But anyway, um, each creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. And they do have two constructs in hand. With Hardened Scales around, I think this just gets out of hand too quickly. The Overseers, at least, like I said, don't get immediate value for entering the battlefield. And we can at least kill one next turn and or deal with a scale. So I think... I think we're supposed to take Metallic Mimic, even though it is in isolation and maybe even in a majority of situations a worse card than Steel Overseer. I think that's the right take. Sure enough, they go Nexus, Overseer, still no Metalcraft, so they just do that and pass. All right, Liliana the Last Hope. Boy, do I love having two of you in this deck for matchups like this. So... Before I found her, it was an open question as to whether I'm supposed to pop the Hardened Scales or kill the Overseer with this Golgari Charm. I was always going to do one of the two. But now, I think, I think I'm supposed to just kill the Steel Overseer and plan to have them play the other one out next turn and we just kill it with Lily the Last Hope. Now, like we saw in Game 1, the Hardened Scales is still very frightening. It makes a lot of their average top decks very, very good. But they don't have the army of other 
artifacts in the background to go along with it, right? They don't have the double animation module. They don't have the Throne of Geth. They don't have all the stuff to make it truly insane. So while there might be an argument that you're supposed to just kill this on site, you know, going on a more traditional affinity style plan with just giving stuff counters the old fashioned way with Overseer is actually still a big problem. So I think we made the right call there. And yeah, all they can do again is run out another Overseer. That's kind of perfect for us. And hey, we don't even have to spend our fetch land quite, let, quite yet. We just get to play a Field of Ruin, which is a nice one in the matchup. And take up the Lily, kill the Overseer. Yeah, yeah, definitely feeling good now. So, that said, they've shown they can beat us from a position like this. Inquisition of Kozilek getting targeted by Surgical Extraction is among the last things I possibly expected here. Um... I've said it before, I'll say it again, I don't think Surgical's that good against us. Truly do not. Um, very happy for them to voluntarily go down on cards here, because of course we don't have an Inquisition to take. Now, let's give my opponent credit here. They've played very well, they've, they've made some bold plays as well. This is another bold play. Um, I assume that they're a little bit choked on mana, and they have a card in hand they don't want to get Inquisitioned. Probably an XX payoff card like Rav like Ballista or Hangerback Walker, or maybe an Arcbound Ravager they're reluctant to expose. So Inquisition or Surgical on Inquisition, okay, that protects their hand. Sure, but yeah, I mean, they're just going to see we've got a couple threats in hand. We drew a Tarmogoyf. We've got the Lily on field. Next turn, we can slam the Kalidus, so they're going to get to get our Inquisitions out of the deck. That's honestly fine with me, too, because after a time, they're going to be dead top decks, right? So we've just increased my threat density here. And we're going to untap, and then they just say, you know what, we, we're just going to scoop. Getting to throw down the Kalidus, take up the Lily to five on an empty board. Yeah, they can they can chip at her for, for one but yeah, I don't think they're coming back from that. So while I kind of understand why they would surgical Inquisition, especially because they probably assume we don't have another copy of Golgari Charm in the deck, I just don't think it should have been in against me. Like, I, I like the play. If you have it in hand and if you have nothing better to do, Again, there's an argument they probably have some high-value stuff they want to protect from Inquisition. Maybe we're still sitting on one, because that would be realistic sequencing, right? We kind of had to Golgari Charm, and then Lily that last turn it was too good not to do. So we could have been sitting on another Inquisition. Okay, I understand all that. Yeah, I just don't think this card should be in your deck. You know, what came out for it? Who knows? Who knows? It could be an Arcbound Worker. It could be an animation module, it could be a Throne of Geth, it could be these kind of, you know, cards that make up the numbers like that, that maybe you trim around the edges for when cards like this are, are must-haves. All those cards would have been better there. Like, again, I'm no expert on Hardened Scales Affinity. And maybe I am missing something, but I think people bring this card in against me way too much. And uh, they definitely kind of got punished for it there. That said, we were still in a really commanding position. The fact that they were kind of stuck on two mana um, and we were able to cleanly go um, Inquisition into what was basically a removal spell into Liliana cleanly answering another Overseer. We've got Kalidus ready to come down here. We can then untap with fresh draws off the top, Tarmogoy, Field of Ruin, a Manland, all waiting in the wings. Yeah, so, so good. So we uh, we definitely had the tools to be in a commanding position with just our opening hand of Inquisition, Golgari, Charm, and Kalidus. Liliana was the missing piece of the puzzle to really make our sequencing too powerful for them to come back from while they're kind of struggling to, to get going. Um, now they had, they had three really powerful cards in hand. We answered them all, and that was that. So, really crazy three games. Game one, uh, I felt we had them under control, and then out of nowhere, they just ripped a couple bombs off the top. You know, we were potentially getting back into the game with Tassiger finding us a fatal push, but they called our bluff, and we didn't have an answer to it. They were a little too quick for us, and we chose not to block, and we got punished for it. Um... 
and then these two post side games were very very different as well. We had they we had them go all in on a turn four Dromokas command trying to kill our Tazigar. We blew him out with a push, and that was that. And here we just had a more traditional, really high value sequence of discard into removal into Lily the Last Hope into Kalidas, and they just are not beating that unless they can come up with something more explosive than they had. So. Man, I really relish playing this matchup. It's so interesting. It's very punishing. If you make a mis- if you make one minor mistake, you can easily lose. You can easily lose this game. It is not a matchup to be taken lightly. I think it's pretty 50-50, but I think my specific setup, um, again, with some generalist cards like Maelstrom Pulse and EE to come in from the side, and Golgari Charm as well, I think we are pretty well set up compared to the average Golgari deck. That is for sure. So, great games. It was a pleasure to, to play this match as it often is. Well played to the opponent and to the watcher. As always, thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think about the lines. Let me know what you think about the, uh, the decisions here. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. So, thanks again and stay tuned to the channel. As always, we've got more gameplay coming down the pipe. And I will see you for the next video. Have a great day.